Good morning, friends. It is Saturday morning and it is early and I woke up to a messy kitchen. It wasn't too, too bad, but definitely I did not get to the dishes yesterday. We spent the whole day in the kitchen and I just didn't feel like tackling the dishes. So we're gonna go ahead and do that this morning. We have a lot we're gonna get done today. We've got to clean the kitchen before we can hurry up and start a bunch of kitchen projects. I do like to start my day, if possible, with a clean kitchen. I don't always go to bed with a clean kitchen, but if I can get up and kind of get it tidied, that usually makes my day go a little bit smoother. So what we got to get done today is first the dishes so that I can have a clean sink so we can get to some pretty big food preservation projects. We have to finish up and button up some projects we started yesterday, and then we're going to start some brand new projects today. We're going to make some quick refrigerator pickles. We got to empty and fill the freeze dryer. We are going to do some baking. We have to freeze some of the garden fresh produce we harvested together before it goes bad. It is my sister-in-law's wedding this weekend and we are going to be heading out of town for that. And I want to make sure that I take care of any of the garden fresh produce that I got out of the garden before it goes bad. I want to make sure I am a good steward of that and it would be pretty sad if I harvested it and we didn't get to take care of it. So that is on the list today. We're also gonna do a little bit of laundry and we are going to make dinner tonight together. And I'm really excited about that because it's gonna be a delicious pasta recipe that we're gonna use a lot of our garden fresh produce in. Now that I have the dishwasher unloaded and loaded, I'm gonna go ahead and hand wash a bunch of these bowls. When it comes to harvest and preservation, these stainless steel big bowls make my life a lot easier and I do not have room in my dishwasher to wash them. My dream, if I ever am ever going to remodel a kitchen, I would love to have two dishwashers. I don't, a lot of people want two ovens, but I think it would be so nice in a dream world to have one dishwasher where you can put big pots and pans and one dishwasher for things that you normally put in dishwasher, like bowls and plates and silverware. But that's just me fantasizing that one day maybe I will have that, but I don't know. So now we've got these big bowls all washed. I'm gonna go ahead and get them all rinsed up. One of my favorite things to do is clean the sink itself because that means that I have emptied the sink and it feels like a huge accomplishment. And it always makes the kitchen to me feel a lot cleaner and tidier. And it's just one of those kind of like satisfying chores to do. And so we're gonna get that done. I want to, between the what we prepped the food the last couple days in the kitchen together and what we're gonna make for dinner tonight and some baking projects we're gonna to do today is my goal is to try to get as much kitchen stuff done today so that I can focus on computer stuff during the week right before we leave for the wedding because we leave Thursday for the wedding. So now we've got a clean kitchen basically just in time to start more kitchen projects. These are tomatoes. I've been going down to the garden every about three days and harvesting tomatoes as they've been coming in. If they're not totally ripe, I'm still harvesting them because I'm not in the garden every day. I don't want anything to get overripe on the vine and then we lose it. So I'm letting them ripen inside just to make sure we maximize our garden harvest. I am not gonna be able to go through all these tomatoes before we go out of town. So the ones that were ripe and ready, I'm just gonna put those in a Ziploc bag and we're gonna go ahead and freeze them. And now we are going to clean the counter and then we are officially going to be done with cleaning the kitchen just in time to make it a mess again. <laughs> That's kind of the cycle of kitchen work and cooking from scratch and doing home preservation projects. We put in this zucchini together in the freeze dryer last time we were in the kitchen together and it is all done and ready to come out. This is probably one of my new favorite food preservation items. I love this stuff and I've been using it a ton. I am hoping that I will be able to freeze dry enough to get us a year's worth. Another project we started together yesterday was we made these peach hand pies and that was a fun project. I wanted a way with this project to think of a way to preserve peaches other than just canned peaches or frozen peaches and I thought I would give this a try. It was kind of a trial run for doing apple hand pies. Josh's favorite dessert, I've mentioned this before, is apple pie, and I don't like apple pie. 
so I never make it <laughs> because if I was to make a whole apple pie, he would have to eat the whole apple pie. So I had this aha moment thinking, I'm gonna make hand pies and then I could just pull one or two out of the freezer and he could enjoy an apple hand pie. So the peach pies were kind of an experiment for that. I did put them in my food saver and I vacuumed them up so that they would stay hopefully nice and fresh in the freezer for a long period of time. So sometime this winter we can enjoy the taste of fresh peaches and I won't have to go through all the work of actually having to make them. That's one cool thing about food preservation. You can preserve single ingredients like this zucchini here and have that to make into recipes, or you can preserve something up into a final dish. So that is what I did with those pies. Now that my freeze dryer is empty, my goal is to keep it running all the time right now. So I have some frozen beef, I think that's heart and liver going in the freeze dryer for the dogs. Those are something that they really, really enjoy and it's a way to use up the whole animal and respect the animal and I don't have to eat it myself. If you are interested in a freeze dryer, I can link the one I have below. I love it. And now we also have some green beans that I've been harvesting. Every time I go, I grab a handful of green beans from the garden and we've got a bunch of them here. So my goal here was to get these blanched up and frozen. So I am rinsing them off and taking any extra leaves off or anything and de-stemming them, <laughs> taking the stem off. And I thought while I'm doing this, I might as well get some water onto boil so we can blanch things. Now, some vegetables, when I freeze, I take the time to blanch and some I do not. You'll see that later in this video when we do some other preservation projects. Green bean and corn are two things that I have found the quality to be much, much better when you take the time to blanch it first before you freeze it. We're gonna talk about peppers later and I have noticed that there is no need to blanch peppers and onions before you freeze them so I don't take the time to do that with those. I did fill up a pot of cold water in there because once those green beans come out of the boiling water we're going to put them in the cold water so that they can stop the cooking process. What we're trying to do is denature an enzyme that's naturally in produce that in boiling water it denatures it and it helps keep produce fresher in the freezer longer. Those green bags are bags, are produce bags that were a gift in my PO box and I like to reuse those. So I rinse those off and I have those green bags just sitting there to dry. Once they're dry, we'll take the time to put them away. And now I have an entire bowl of beautifully blanched green beans and you're gonna end up seeing what we do with these. My goal was to freeze them, but you'll see that that didn't end up actually happening. Now I am doing some laundry. I was completely out of rags or like dish towels. We have been in the kitchen for so long the last couple days that I did not have one dish towel. So I needed to make sure that I washed up some dish towels. Once I got those towels in the dryer, I took my coffee and I sat and I just enjoyed the morning. But through the magic of television, my towels are dry and now ready to be folded. This is my old work desk and I decided to put this in my laundry room and it's working perfect as a folding station. I plan to eventually get a really big table to put in the middle of this laundry room as a folding station, but for now I'm loving having that desk repurposed as a folding station. You can see here there was not one cloth napkin or rag or dish towel in this drawer. So to say I am happy to have this full again is an understatement. I go through a lot of dish towels when I'm cooking. And my drawer did not close so I thought I would get one out and I'll put that on the stove so that I can use that today. I am ready for the day. While I was getting ready for the day, Josh went ahead and he unloaded and loaded the dishwasher and he has that going now. So we now officially have a completely clean kitchen, which is pretty awesome. I'm going to fold these bags up because they are dry now. We're gonna put them away. And now we need to get to some more preservation projects. In this fridge, we have some super fun stuff we get to tackle today. We've got our peppers from the garden. These are mostly our sweet peppers, a couple of poblanos, and I think that's about it. These are all peppers that we started the seeds together back in, I 
think it was March. And next year, I have to look back to see exactly when we started this seed, but I'm gonna start them a little bit sooner. But every single pepper that comes out of my garden, I'm, uh-oh. See, this is why we need to get to it because there is a pretty big bad spot on that one. We're gonna take care of all these peppers. And cucumbers. I wanna to try to make some quick pickles with these. I have one more cucumber that's in the inside fridge. And then we have a ton of celery that we need to get to. But the most critical thing right now is celery will last longer in the fridge. So my goal is to get preserved up the things that are gonna go bad the quickest, which are gonna be these cucumbers, these peppers. And then I have a couple zucchinis. These cabbages that are in here, we've got a ton of cabbage. Cabbage will last a long time in the fridge and so will the celery. So that's why we're not going to get to those right away because those will stay fresh in the fridge a lot longer. I can actually see that the ones that I thought had a bad spot, it's not that they have a bad spot, it's that they froze in the freezer a little bit. So I wanna get these all washed up. To dry, I'm just gonna put a towel in the inside of the same bowl we had those peppers in. We're just going to dry them up. We'll just let these dry right here while we deal with the peppers. I'm gonna dice these up and I'm gonna freeze them. Peppers freeze so well. What I grow is not near enough peppers for an entire year's worth of pepper usage for Josh and I. I have a local organic farmer that I used to be a member of their CSA, and I'm no longer a member of their CSA because I have my own garden, but I buy a year's worth of organic peppers from him, and I buy what are called seconds, so that means they're not the beautiful, perfect pepper. They are ones that maybe have, let's see, I had one in here maybe a sunspot where they got a little bit sunburned or they're just not a perfect pepper. And I pay a fraction of the price for what are deemed not perfect peppers. And I preserve those up and those last us an entire year for peppers because it is expensive to buy peppers in the winter, especially organic and peppers are on the dirty dozen list. So there is a list of the clean 15 and dirty dozen. So if you can't afford to buy everything organic, which I can't, then this list kind of helps you decide where you should spend your money if you have to decide what you want to spend your money on organic and what has less pesticides and things like that. So it's okay if you buy conventional. The only peppers I really buy in the winter are peppers to make stuffed peppers because I've never frozen a whole pepper to then make a stuffed pepper. And this year my plan is when I buy my bulk peppers from him is the ones that are pretty good because sometimes the second peppers are beautiful and I'm not sure why they get put in the second pile. We are going to preserve the peppers by making some freezer meals, some different stuffed pepper recipes so that I can have his beautiful local organic peppers with the stuffed peppers, and I'm not buying those peppers from Costco like I normally do. I normally vacuum seal my vegetables, but I'm not gonna vacuum seal these peppers because I know that I'm gonna use these pretty quickly. So I'm gonna throw these in a freezer bag, and we're gonna throw these in the inside freezer here so we know that these are the ones I wanna go through the soonest. And my poblano peppers here, I'm just gonna throw these in with the bell peppers, it'll add another you know, dimension of flavor because I'll just mix them all together. I don't have enough to really make it worth separating the poblano peppers from the bell peppers. I think maybe next year it would be cool if I could grow enough poblanos to make chili rellenos. I think that's how you say it, I don't know. But definitely did not get enough this year to do that. Now I have a compost pile or a compost bowl 
And this will all go to the chickens. And look at all these peppers we got. I mean, this is a huge bag that's gonna be overfloweth. I may even have to get another bag out. And there are definitely probably about another whole harvest of peppers this size in the garden from my plants. Try to get as much air out as possible. Just like that, it's, what is that? March, April, May, June, July, August, it's the end of August-ish, we got one gallon of diced peppers ready for winter cooking. This is probably one, two, three, four, maybe five meals worth of peppers. Labor of love right here, and I couldn't be happier about putting this in my freezer for another day. Now let's get to these cucumbers. For these refrigerator pickles, this is gonna be the easiest thing to do. So I am going to peel the cucumbers. You do not have to peel them if you don't want to. You can basically make a refrigerator pickle out of any vegetable. Doesn't have to be a cucumber. It could be an onion, a radish, celery, cauliflower. The only thing that I think might get a little bit weird would be maybe broccoli. I'm gonna take these cucumbers, and if I had a mandolin, I would use a mandolin, but I don't, so all I'm gonna do is cut these cucumbers really, really thinly. These pickled cucumbers are not gonna be necessarily to put on like a burger or something. It's gonna be more just for like a side dish, a condiment, just something really simple and refreshing. I love anything pickled. I also have a Walla Walla homegrown onion here. I'm gonna cut this really thinly and I'm gonna add this to our pickled cucumbers for flavor and also to eat, depending on how we use these cucumbers. Now we have our cucumbers and our onions. We're gonna go ahead and fill up our jars. I just have two clean mason jars, nothing fancy whatsoever with the container. I'm gonna put a little bit of cucumber in each one. Then we're gonna layer with a little bit of onion. And then more cucumber, more onion. We're gonna do that until we get to the top and we use up all of our vegetables. I hope that I can get it all to fit in these two jars. That could not have fit better. We just used up all of our vegetables in that amount. Now I have some raw cane sugar. You do not have to put this in, but I like to balance a little bit of the flavor. So I'm putting about a tablespoon in each one of these jars. I forgot to hit record. I meant to fill these jars halfway with white distilled vinegar, but I filled that all the way to the top with vinegar. <laughs> okay, so let me pour some of that out. And that looks a lot better right there. I also did add about a half a teaspoon of salt in each jar. We're gonna top the rest with cold water. I'm just pushing down to get any air bubbles out. My aunt gifted me for my birthday last year these ball leak proof lids. They're so much better than the white ones because the white ones leak. When you're doing quick pickles in jars, it's best not to use the metal rings because those can rust. So I really like these lids. I can link them if you're wanting to check them out. I put them on really tight and I'm gonna just give them a couple shakes. You can see how they're not leaking. The only reason I'm doing this is to help dissolve the sugar and the salt and get the water and the vinegar mixed up. So you can find whatever ratio you want of vinegar to water. I like, I probably did more like three fourths vinegar to one part water. I do tend to like things pretty vinegary. You can let this sit for 
an hour and enjoy it or you can let this sit in your fridge for a really really long time you can use this to top burgers you can put this in salad it can just be a nice little crunchy thing on the side of a dinner i also like to take this out of here and mix in some sour cream and some dill and that makes a really good salad awesome okay so these are going to go in the fridge one more project done i was going to freeze these green beans we talked about blanching them and freezing them i think i'm going to use these for dinner tonight i found some tortellinis in my freezer that i want to use up so what i'm going to do is we're going to process these zucchinis that i have left some for dinner tonight i'm going to put it in the sauce with the tortellinis and then i also have these blueberries from this garden from the, the blueberry plants that the previous owner planted on this property. I had a bowl this size of blueberries, but we ate them fresh. And this is all I have left. So I'm gonna make some zucchini blueberry muffins so that we can enjoy those this week and I can freeze a bunch of them. I prefer to freeze muffins over bread. And so that's a good way to preserve up zucchinis in a muffin form as opposed to just its shredded form. So what I'm gonna do is I already washed these I'm gonna grade them up. I'm gonna measure out how much I need for the muffins and then whatever we have left over, I'm gonna put in tonight's dinner. I'll start with the bigger two because I know that the smaller ones will be a little bit more tender for tonight. I need, for this recipe, two cups of zucchini and I definitely, definitely know that I have at least two cups. I might even double it if I have enough. To double it so that's probably one cup right there I do tend to pack it down when I make zucchini bread or muffins okay yep that was one cup so I think I'm gonna do a double recipe so I need four cups of zucchini when you preserve food you can preserve it in its whole form or you can turn it into something like muffins and that counts as food preservation. I'm gonna throw all these blueberries in here. They've already been washed and picked through. I say that, but then there was a stem right there and right there and right there. There we go. Wasn't a ton of blueberries, but better that we use them up than they go bad sitting in the fridge. I'm gonna go ahead and get these zucchinis diced up for dinner tonight while I have them right here. I'm so grateful my neighbor was willing to share zucchinis because zucchini is one of my favorite summer vegetables and my plants did terrible this year. Even though zucchinis are known to be extremely prolific, I had a few that never germinated and then some of them just haven't produced anything. I'm gonna grab an onion and I'm gonna chop an onion up for dinner tonight as well since we are in chopping mode. I'm not gonna be following a recipe. I'll just show you how you can make a really simple pan sauce to go with really any pasta. We just happen to be using cheese tortellinis tonight. I also have a few ripe tomatoes. I'm gonna dice these up Probably not until a little bit closer to dinner so they don't get quite so juicy, but I can take the tops off of them. So what we're gonna do is kind of make, I think a pink-ish sauce because I will use some cream and some Parmesan cheese to make tonight's dinners. Taste really, really yummy. That's probably enough. These ones kind of need to ripen a little bit more. So we have dinner prepped. I'm gonna set this aside. I did just put some chicken thighs in some cold water to thaw, and we will get going on our muffins. We need six eggs. I'm gonna cut the sugar again. Last time I made this recipe, I cut the sugar a little bit, and I'm gonna cut it again. So I'm gonna put two cups of sugar in here instead of three cups of sugar. I only cut it by half a cup last time. I'm sure it'll be just fine, but we'll find out together. Now I'm gonna add a cup and a half of neutral flavored oil. I used my measuring spoon that goes in my flour. Darn it. Oh well, that's okay. Now we need to add, not baking powder, baking soda. I'm glad I double checked that. I always 
do that. Did I put the flour in here? No. Four cups of flour. I want to put the flour in before I put the baking soda so I can kind of mix the baking soda into the flour a little bit. I'm not following proper protocol in which order this stuff should go in here, but it worked out just fine last time I did this. My baking soda is clumpy. That's why I always have to break it up. I'm adding a lot of cinnamon. <laughs> last but not least, as long as I didn't forget anything, good amount of vanilla. I just preheated the oven to 350 degrees. I'm gonna do one loaf pan of zucchini bread, and then the rest I'm gonna make into muffins. I like the way that muffins freeze better. So the zucchini bread that's gonna be in the loaf pan, we'll go ahead and I'll just leave out and we will enjoy that for breakfast or dessert or whatever. And then the rest of them that go in the muffin tins, I'm gonna freeze those for later use. I never made muffins ever because I hated cleaning a muffin tin. And then I discovered muffin liners. They are so worth it. They make cleanup so, so easy. So I'm gonna put those down and I do like to just give them a little bit of a spray. We'll start with that and see how much it makes. This concept of preserving food in an actual product instead of just preserving it in a single raw form, like peppers, dicing them up and preserving them in peppers or tomatoes into tomato sauce, but turning that food into something is something that I've never really thought about until this year. For example, these blueberry muffins, I'm preserving the blueberries and the zucchini in blueberry muffin form instead of just freezing the blueberries and freezing the zucchini. Just like the stuffed peppers, as long as my farmer has a lot of stuffed peppers for me, I'm going to make a ton of freezer meals out of those stuffed peppers. And so in the long run, it's going to save me a lot of time because I would have to preserve this one way or the other. But instead of just preserving it in a single form, which I still think there's benefit and I will still do that. But I'm also moving forward going to try to think of things where I can preserve those items in actual food form. That is ready to eat if that makes any sense so i'm kind of excited about this i just got these out of the oven and they are cooked perfectly so i'm going to put them on a drying rack or a cooling rack the bread has probably another half an hour and i think my chicken is thaw enough and we're going to get dinner going right now so look at all these muffins we got to put in the freezer for a later date that i don't have to cook i don't think i'm ever going to make a plain blueberry muffin again <laughs> The zucchini blueberry muffin is fantastic. Mmm, so good. A blueberry muffin is good, but a zucchini blueberry muffin is fantastic. Mmm, okay. In here, I have some oil, and I just diced up our chicken thighs. I'm gonna get these cooked up. I'm going to season this with some salt, pepper. This is all the pepper I have left in my house. I'm putting in an Azure order this month, and I'm going to put pepper in that order. While I'm waiting for that to go ahead and cook, I'm going to dice up our tomatoes over here. I have a pot on of water to boil to cook our tortellini. My goal is to try to have enough food in the house so that I don't really have to do that much cooking for the rest of the week. And I think I might just be there with between what I've made the last two days in the kitchen and dinner tonight. I do have just some different, like really easy dinners. I could, some sandwich stuff and really, really easy things I could throw together if I need to, but I don't wanna go out of town and have a bunch of leftovers or have produce that needs to be preserved up in my fridge. That was kind of the, the goal here, to try to get enough food cooked now so I don't have to cook. I can focus on getting computer work done before we head out and packing. There's a couple things I need to buy for the wedding before I head out of town. 
and I need to button up the garden and make sure that's ready for me to go out of town, make sure the chickens are set for me to go out of town, and the last thing I really want to think about are meals this coming week because I have enough other things that I need to think about. So that's kind of why I'm wanting to prep some of this now. So you'll notice I'm not stirring this chicken at all once I put it in here. I want it to get a really nice brown color. I probably shouldn't have even crowded the pan that much, but I don't have time to do multiple batches just to get brown chicken. So what I'm gonna do instead of doing multiple batches is I'm just not gonna touch it until it gets a nice color on it, hopefully. I went to the garage to grab the carbonated woo, water, and this is now very much ready. Like I said, I'm going to cook all of it. Salt. And pepper. My goal here is to blister these green beans, just like that. Because they've already been blanched, we don't have to fully cook them in this pan. I just wanna get some nice, yummy color on them. For these green beans, I'm gonna turn this off because they have nice color. I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of butter, and then I have here our homegrown garlic that I'm gonna to add to it. And that is our beautiful side for dinner. I wish you could smell this, the garlic and the butter and the fresh green beans out of this world. Something so simple can be so good. And they still definitely have a nice crunch to them. They're tender though and they've got a nice char, which that's just flavor right there. So that's done. We've got a nice color forming on the chicken. I'm going to go ahead and get the chicken off the stove because it's nice and browned. Oh, my cutting board is way too close to my stove. I'm going to have to get used to how much heat a propane stove puts off. So I'm going to turn the temperature down just a little bit so that these onions can sweat and we can pick up all that flavor from the bottom of the pan. I do need to salt the onions. That will help draw out the moisture from the onions. So this has only been sitting in here for about a minute. You can see how there's a little bit of moisture that's already released from those onions. It is already deglazing the bottom of this pan, which is awesome. That is pure flavor. Once you learn some of the cooking techniques or rules Techniques is probably a better term. Rules is probably not the best term. Then you don't really have to follow recipes except for in baking. <laughs> That's why I'm not as good of a bake. Oh my goodness. All right. I think our zucchini bread is done. <laughs> ah! That's why I'm not as good of a baker because, oh no, it's not done yet. Because I have a harder time following rules. And so, I like cooking better because you can kind of go with your intuition a little bit better. And then you don't have to follow rules as much. And what really, really helped me learn some of these cooking techniques was America's Test Kitchen. They have a really good YouTube channel, but I used to just watch their full episodes. I used to binge them. Love America's Test Kitchen. Their cookbook, I've talked about it before. It's called the America's Test Kitchen Cooking School. I can link it down below. I've read that book front to back. I don't have a ton of cookbooks, but that is a cookbook I think everybody should have. It's a fantastic cookbook. That zucchini bread is looking a little bit dark and it's not done on the inside, so I'm gonna put a piece of foil on it. It's almost done, but I don't want the top to brown anymore. I'm gonna go ahead and turn up the stove now. Oh my goodness, friends, I just ate a green bean and they are so, 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 so good. Okay, we're gonna get our Cordellini's in here. These are the fresh ones you can get at Costco, but I did have them in the freezer. It says they take four minutes to cook, but I think they're gonna take a little bit longer. Our onions, I'm gonna add our tomatoes and our zucchini. I think I actually want the tomatoes to cook down a little bit to break down so we can make a kind of like a pink sauce with them. And then I want my zucchini to have a little bit more life in it. So we're gonna wait and 
put the zucchini in toward the end because I want to leave it to have a nice crunch. I'm going to add a little bit of garlic to this. I'm going to strain the pasta. I love this thing. This is a strainer that you don't have to get a whole colander out. Our tomatoes have started to break down just a little bit, so I'm gonna add the zucchini. I think I'm gonna add just a little bit of red pepper flake, just to help bring a little bit of heat to this. Add our zucchini. Awesome. I'm gonna get that stirred in, and then I think our zucchini bread should be done. Perfect. I'm gonna let this cool for about 10, 15 minutes and then we'll take it out of here. To our pasta, I'm gonna put our chicken. We're gonna add what makes it pink, which is some cream. I don't have very much of that. Because I didn't have very much cream, I'm gonna add a little half and half. If you are not in the States, half and half is what we put in our coffee typically and it is half cream, half milk. I'm gonna mix that together and we're gonna let this reduce and thicken up. To this, I am going to add Parmesan cheese and then we're gonna give everything a taste test. It looks fantastic, it smells fantastic. I just need another green bean, those are good. Mmm, ooh. I love Parmesan cheese. Ooh, a little bit of heat at the end. It does need a little bit of salt. When I'm cooking with Parmesan, I would try to be careful with the salt up front because it does have a lot of salt. But we did add, you know, some more vegetables and the cream. And that stuff doesn't have salt in it, obviously. So it did need a little bit more salt. You always want to taste everything because you want to make sure the Seasoning is correct. Okay, I think I mixed that in well enough. I love a pink sauce. It's probably my favorite. Oh yeah. Woo! That is so good. This sauce is a little bit thin still, but I'm gonna go ahead and pour it over our chicken and noodles because it's still early-ish. What time is it? I guess it's five o'clock, but we probably won't eat for, I don't know, two hours or so and the pasta will absorb some of this liquid. Yes, my sink is full of dirty dishes already. That is what happens when you cook a lot from scratch. You clean it up just in time to make it dirty again. I'm gonna pour all this yummy pink sauce in here. Here is dinner, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dish this up into, you can see the sauce is a little bit thin at the bottom. That will, I think, absorb into the pasta and thicken up as it cools. And I'm gonna serve this up into leftover containers for lunches and or dinners later this week. Plus we have our green beans, we have our zucchini bread and muffins. We got a few preservation projects done. We got the dishes done just in time to make more dishes, which I'm totally fine with. But I do feel like I've been in the kitchen for three full days and there is a new season of making the cut. <laughs> It's like a project runway. So what I think I'm gonna do is enjoy the rest of my carbonated water. I'm gonna go sit down and watch a little bit of making the cut and just decompress and relax and enjoy the rest of this Saturday afternoon. Did I get all the preservation projects done? No. I've got probably, well, we haven't weighed the potatoes yet. I still wanna weigh those potatoes. I'm not gonna let myself eat any of those potatoes till we weigh them. We've got tons of onions we need to process, tons of garlic we need to process. We need to braid it up, trim it, clean it. We need to get the cabbage. I do wanna try making not sauerkraut, it's a type of sauerkraut. It's called, I think like crudo or catito. It's like a Latin American or like Spanish style sauerkraut that I think I would really like to put on tacos because just the plain sauerkraut was not my favorite. And I do wanna try that with some of the cabbage. And then we need to process a lot of that celery. Celery is gonna last a long time in the fridge, so I'm not really worried about that right now. I will get to it, but we got the cucumbers done. Those were gonna go bad if we didn't deal with them. 
The green beans were gonna go bad if we didn't deal with them, so I'm glad we got, oh, and the zucchini would have gone bad if we didn't deal with it too. So I'm glad we took care of the critical items first, and then we can deal with some of the other items on another day. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I greatly appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, I'd greatly appreciate a thumbs up. I also can put a couple other videos right here that you can go enjoy between now and my next upload. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye friend.